Tony Khan did an interview. Dan Lebatard, I believe is the name of this bloke. Will you stop? And uh, Dan Lebatard. Is that what it is? I yes. actually swear to God I didn't know. You know, it's like when uh, Lon McCarron uh, used to do the K-1 shows for ESPN. He, instead of saying Jerome Le Banner, he would, like, read it as if it was French and he was Jerome Le Banier. He's, he's probably right. I don't know. I, I thought Actually, it was great. he probably is right. I liked rolling with that afterwards. It's like, all right, who is it? It's Peter Arts against Jerome Le Banier. I liked it. So anyway, uh, he was on this guy's show. Dan, we'll call him. <laughs> what if I pull a granny? <laughs> Dan. He was, Dan Lebatard. He, he was on guys. Dan's show. <laughs> he spoke about the tumultuous relationship. See, I pronounced tumultuous right. This company, he should name himself Dan Tumultuous. Then he wouldn't have a problem. Well, he's with Cuban. me at least. I don't, I don't know. Ask, uh, do you know anyone who's Cuban? Is Marvel's So here's Cuban? what he said. He goes, I've had a lot of wrestlers. This is, this is Tony Khan. Yes. Who? Oh, Tony Khan. Yes. He said, I've had a lot of wrestlers come to me. An alleged WWE reached out to them to tamper with their contracts and ask them to break their contracts. I can't confirm that specifically. I can only tell you what the wrestlers have come to me and said. But I have had multiple wrestlers and staff report that to me. It was very disturbing. You don't say. I've had to go out and try to put on good shows despite this alleged tampering and stuff like that. Frankly, I don't think it stopped us because the quality of the product and the quality of the shows is at an all-time high right now. He held a talent meeting in August to address the allegations. And then uh, Chief Legal Officer uh, Mega sent out an uh, email to Nick Khan and Stephanie telling them, quote, not to tamper with AEW talent. He said that the wrestling war leads to exciting television. He says... I think wrestling fans, at the end of the day, appreciate that a lot of what happens in wrestling shows is sometimes story, and that's why people like watching the shows. They like the stories, the exciting matches, especially the combination of the two. Now, what's interesting is a story that is the most real, the most intense, the most hatred in all of pro wrestling, is that between the two wrestling promotions. I think we really, truly hate each other. I think it makes for really exciting TV. Makes for an exciting wrestling war. So he talked about the New Japan partnership and how Nick Khan attempted to basically take the New Japan partnership from AEW to WWE, which, by the way, was part of uh, uh, this was uh, May of 2021 that this happened. And uh, he said, I called New Japan executives. I said, is this true? Did WWE call you and try to get you to turn on me? And they said, yes. And I said, okay, well, are we still doing the stuff we had planned? Because at the time, we had a match set up for Wednesday Night Dynamite. There was going to be a New Japan title match in AEW. It was the first of many such matches. And they told me, no, we don't trust them. We want to work with you, and we want to stay with you. And ever since, our relationship has been incredibly positive. So, uh... Do I think that uh, WWE hates AEW? I don't think they hate them. Would they like to crush them? Well, of course. And, I mean, you know, this is Tony saying they hate each other, so that tells me that he hates them. No, it doesn't. Well, I mean, if he says that. tells you that Tony Khan is a promoter because here's the deal. Like, this is not worth hate. It really isn't. It's business, okay? Maybe he hates them. It's it's look from a business point of view, from the mechanics of the operation. I'm sure WWE does want to roll over and kill AEW, but the the fact of the matter is, there is a human element to all of this stuff, and we are all better off those men and women who have the ability to go back and forth between two companies in which they can earn a full time living for them and their families. Like you know. It's better this way. So there is really no hate at the end of the day, or at least there really shouldn't be any real hate. That just sounds like a promoter really wanting to hype this up because at the end of the day, both of those places have got to care about their own products and and dictating their own future. It doesn't matter what the other one does. Yeah, you're going to battle over some names here and there, but the reality of the situation is you got to deal with your own stuff. So it really doesn't matter what that other person is doing. So why build up that sort of hate for him? 
That's just fun so we can flood it out here so everybody can, like, rabble-rouse and throw their spears back and forth at each other like they do every single week, every you know, and every single day anyway. Okay, everyone's talking about Hunter and trustworthiness and, and Carlin. Listen, everybody, did you hear the this interview? This is all separate stuff. The, the interview, this, this happened in May of 2021. So this had nothing to do with Triple H. It had nothing to do with later Carl Anderson and and the never. Things are obviously different now with New Japan and WWE. Now they're obviously willing to to do something with each other. In in May of 2021, they didn't want to work with WWE. They did not want to switch their allegiance to Nick Khan from Tony Khan. That was May of 2021. Now clearly. They have more trust in whether it's WWE or Triple H himself, or maybe he called them. And I mean, they did something. They had Carl Anderson go and defend the never open weight title and then lose it. So they they are clearly now willing to do something together, but they weren't in May 2021. And these are two totally different situations here. And you're also listening to Tony Khan's version of what his conversation with New Japan was. You got to remember, these New Japan does not really work incredibly well with people, and you know, work real well with new relationships. Okay, it takes them time to like warm up to you. We saw what went down with Kidani and everything, or actually before that, uh, with uh, what was his name? Um, why am I brain locking on the old? president of new japan but once he was out of the way things seemed to thaw a little bit but it wasn't like aew was not going after new japan talking about harold may started harold may but it's not like new japan and aew were not going after the same talent there's talent that aew really wanted and wanted to sign away from new japan trent being one of those examples so like you're only hearing one side of this story from Tony Khan as far as what New Japan really thinks about WWE or what they would say in a different type of situation. I, I don't know. You, you know, there's there's multiple sides to this story. Knock knock. Who's there? Ric Flair. Ric Flair. Who? No, Ric Flair. Who? <laughs> I didn't get that one. <laughs> <laughs> Knock, knock, who's there? <laughs> Bailey. Bailey who? We Bailey made it home in time to watch SmackDown Live. That's not how knock, knock jokes work! <laughs> we Bailey? What does that mean? She's small. It's <laughs> we barely made it home. Oh, we barely made it. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, your Invisalign made you dumb. <laughs> Why did the referee referee's feet smell when he was working? Because he was a doody, doodle. Whatever. What? what? <laughs> because he was a doodle. His feet smelled because he was a doodle. Yeah, I don't get it. What? See, these, these, these are so dumb that they're funny. Am I high? I don't. I, I drove here. I think I was sober when I got here. If you enjoy these videos, for just seven dollars and ninety-nine cents per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.